Amen. Okay, Brother Fred. Okay, the title of the message tonight is Enlarge Your Territory. Now, that might be some physical territory, it might ge be geographical territory, but it's also your authority and your influence. Mm -hmm. uh, you have influence in your life and in your family's life, but uh, you can, uh, by increasing your relationship with the Lord, and we'll be talking about that in this message, uh, then you can have influence over other, in other arenas, uh, let's say in the marketplace, in your office, in, uh, and mm -hmm. so you're over uh, time, God in, wants to increase all of us. You know, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly, and that's a growing, uh, mm -hmm. increasing. You know, his kingdom uh, is going to increase and there's no end to the increase. Amen. And you're Amen. part of it and you're part of the increase and he wants to give you increase. Uh, increase your territory, not just uh, physical, uh, but also a spiritual uh, territory where, where you have authority and that's spiritual. So we'll just be talking in general about uh, enlarging your territory but God wants you to enlarge and increase. And uh, this is the year. And at the beginning of the year, I like to look ahead to the future. And I think we all need to do that uh, at some point in time. And this is a good time to do that, to be thinking about the future. And we need uh, not to just continue along where we are now, but we, let's have a vision of something in the future that's greater uh, than what we have today. And that's important for all of us. Uh, I believe that uh, Jesus said, if you're faithful in a little thing, he'll make you ruler over much. Amen. If faithful in a little, ruler over much. And so I see a progression there and that he wants to increase us. And so uh, the scriptures we're going to start with are God uh, created everything and uh, he put man in a garden. So he put Adam and Eve in a garden. And uh, that's pretty exciting. And he gave him some, uh, gave uh, Adam and Eve some commandments and some things to do and instructions. And so let's look there. I think this is a good place to begin. It's just that God wants people in a garden and, and over time he wants that garden to grow because he gives us uh, instructions to tend our garden. So let's start here with Adam and Eve. And this is in Genesis chapter <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And then let's go to Genesis 1, 28. God blessed them, Adam and Eve, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. That's increase. Yes, it's and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. And now in other places, he said that he's given man to, uh, dominion over every creepy thing. Well, the snakes are creepy, and the, the devil's creepy, and uh, he, he and wanted, spiders to give, are creepy. wanted to give you authority over... Uh, wanted to give man authority over the devil from the beginning but there was some things that man and i'm talking about in general mankind needed to do adam and eve they needed to do and they had a garden and they were to put a security around it and make sure that nothing came in there and and destroyed mm -hmm. their garden they were to tend it they were to take care of it and uh, then of course we all know the story there was a uh, Adam and Eve, uh, there was a fall, a uh, fall of man. The first Adam fell. He sinned, and he was uh, removed from the garden. Now, let's just think about the devil for a moment. The devil came in there and tempted uh, Eve, and, and uh, she fell for it, and Adam fell for it, and so it talks about the sin of Adam. And uh, But let's think about what happened. What was that actually given up? And let me say, it was not about power. It was never about power. God is omnipotent, omnipotent. 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 I like to say it, omnipotent potent is the way I kind of think of it in my mind, is the way it's spelled. But it's omnipotent, 
meaning all powerful. So when a man fell by sin in the garden, God didn't lose any power and uh, the devil didn't gain any power. What was at stake in the garden was authority. And this message tonight mm. is about authority, about increasing authority. Mm. Wow. You have so much authority, uh, uh, but you can increase it. And that's what I'm talking about. Enlarge your territory, increase your authority. And we're going to be talking about that. Uh, and so uh, the fall of man in the garden had nothing to do with power. It had to do with authority. And so Jesus came and uh, to put us back in the garden. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He came to put us back in the garden. And, and so uh, if we look at 1 John 3, 8, I want you to read this out of the Passion Translation. I love there's an extra phrase in here. It says in 1 John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. Undo and destroy. and destroy. Okay, so what happened? Authority, man's authority was lost uh, when Adam sinned. Mm -hmm. Authority, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. power. Uh, the, the devil didn't increase power uh, when he was in the garden. He uh, took authority that had been delegated to Adam and uh, he, he usurped that authority. Woo, woo, it wasn't woo. about power, so his power didn't increase. Mm. Then uh, Jesus came and on the cross, he undid and destroyed mm. the works of the devil. Hallelujah. So that meant that we can go back into the garden. Uh, that's exciting, Hallelujah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Hallelujah. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the issue was about authority, but Jesus came to undo and destroy Troy. the works of the devil. The devil uh, usurped authority. I want you to read this out of Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 12. And he said to them, Elijah does come first, and he restores all things. Okay, so Jesus Hallelujah. is talking to his disciples about uh, not the man Elijah, but the spirit, spirit of God of that was upon Elijah. And so we might call that the spirit of Elijah, but it was really the spirit of God. And so it says, the spirit. One way to really interpret what he's saying here is when the Spirit of God comes, he's going to restore all things. So in your life, he's going to restore all things. He's going to restore, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, restore all things so that you can walk in authority in the garden. And Hallelujah. like Sherry Hallelujah. just uh, sang a song about yes. walking with Amen. God. That's what Second uh, Corinthians uh, three, uh, I believe, it's verse sixteen, uh, chapter Second Corinthians six, six sixteen. Or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, "I will dwell <clears throat> among them, and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. So. Praise God. God is with us. It's like the garden. We're back in the garden. Jesus put us back in the garden. Now, we have to know that, and we have to operate like that. But then the same uh, commandments uh, and instructions that Adam and Eve got in their garden, we have the same ones. That's to be fruitful and multiply and mm, expand. Hallelujah. And, and then also, you've got to make sure your garden is secure. Uh, because mm, uh, mm, mm, now mm. Jesus defeated uh, the devil, and he took his authority away from him. All authority, see? Okay, so after his resurrection, Jesus could say all authority. He didn't say all power because the issue was never about power because God never lost any power. 
It was the delegated authority to Adam and Eve that was lost when when they sinned. Mm -hmm. and, and so when Jesus was resurrected, what did he say? What did he proclaim? All, All authority, authority in heaven, heaven and earth is given unto me. Oh, that's so good. It's good. So it, it's good. So the devil usurped authority. So the devil has no authority today. Jesus has, has all authority. Has all authority. Okay. So uh, in Luke, uh, I believe it's eleven nineteen. He said, "I." I we're not going to see oh, it okay, here. But okay. He said, uh, uh, "Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, all those creepy things." Luke uh, four nineteen. Uh, four. No, not four. Luke. Oh, Luke. Oh, in Luke. Okay. How God anointed? No, no, no! You got me. You got me going <laughs> off the wrong way. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, he said, "Behold, I give you power and authority." I oh, know I give you authority to tread on the serpents and scorpions, and over all uh, uh, the uh, power of the enemy. Power. See, authority over power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let me say it again. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy authority uh, we have authority over all the power of the enemy and so that nothing will hurt you okay so jesus has all authority he has delegated authority to believers and uh just like adam and eve had authority over creepy things we have authority over creepy things Amen. and that includes the devil and we have authority over him. And uh, like I said, uh, his power did not increase at the fall of man. The devil didn't. And when Jesus defeated him, uh, it wasn't about power. It was about authority. Amen. And Jesus rose victorious. He had all authority, has all authority. And he's delegated authority to you and me. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And that's what we're supposed to be expanding and increasing okay so, so our territory uh can just be authority maybe, maybe that's what it's about but authority you you need to apply it someplace and so let's think about your authority in your home authority in your neighborhood authority in your workplace authority in your finances in your uh, over lots of areas so whatever area god quickens to you by the spirit as you grow and mature in the Lord, you're going to have more and more authority. And so we need to look then. There's really three points. This is a simple message tonight. There are three points I want to make. And the first point in the idea about enlarging territory, we need to be mindful of the future. Because mm. who you are in the future, you're more powerful, more have more authority in the future. You're better looking in the future than you are today. Hallelujah. You're, Hallelujah. Everything is more, well, more abundantly. He yeah. gives you life and life more abundantly. So it's about more. So you look at the future and see who you are and where you are. Then that's who you are becoming mm. in Christ. You are becoming that future identity. And so we're operating here today in the present realm, hmm. but we're always mindful of the future oh, because yeah. today we can come to the Lord as a little child. We can hmm. come as a little child uh, and he gives you things because you're his beloved child. Amen. Uh, you know, we can operate in the kingdom two different ways. One, and we can ask for uh, as a child, and, and uh, you know, they were asking them, and the disciples were wondering, and Jesus put a little child before him, unless, unless you come as a little child, oh, hallelujah, you're not going to come into the kingdom, you have to come as a little child, well, that's who we are in the present, who are we in the future as we mature, well, we're mature sons, mature sons, mm -hmm. we're mature, okay, and so there are times that we have to take the kingdom by force, and so it's not the little child that takes the kingdom by force. It's the mature, it's the mature warrior. Hallelujah. And that's, okay. So we have to see who we are today, but we also have to see who we are becoming in Christ. 
See, we know from 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we are being changed. And so we're not the way we are today is not the way we're going to be tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to be better looking. We're going to be brighter and smarter, have more wisdom and more understanding in the future than we do today. But Paul said we need to be thinking about the future because that sets the goal for where we're going. Let's look at Philippians 3, and I have three verses I want you to read here. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already grasped or apprehended it all or have already become perfect, but I press on if I may also take hold of that which I was even taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not regard myself as having taken hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forget, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. What I want you to see here is that Paul was not mindful of the past. He had forgotten the past. See, a lot of people are dwelling in their past. I've had all of this abuse. I've had all mm -hmm. these problems. Uh, uh, people have done these things. So they're dwelling in the past. But we're not to be that way. We're to be yeah, we're, in the present yeah. moment, living in the present moment, mindful of the future. And that's the way Paul was. Mm, you hallelujah. know, we're told to imitate Paul as he imitated Christ. He was mindful of the future. And that's why we need to be. And, and so if we're going to enlarge, uh, if we're going to enlarge, and I have three points. If we're going to enlarge, we have to be mindful of the future. We have to have a goal out there mm -hmm. and always living today uh, with the future in mind. That's the way oh, Paul operated. Hallelujah. Now, he was a long way along in his ministry when he wrote the book of Philippians. And he said, I haven't arrived there yet. I I'm still mm -hmm. pressing toward the goal. I there's a goal out there. And that's a goal for all of us. And that's who you're going to be. That's who you are becoming. Mm -hmm. uh, you're that mature person out there in the future where everything is working properly and you've got all that power, all authority, and uh, you've got all of the enemy underneath you and you've got all of that extra, uh, the sphere of authority. You have a greater sphere of authority. That's who you are in the future. And, and then you compare it to today. So you have to balance these two things. You balance uh, what you're doing today, but you're always mindful of the future so you've got goals out there and we're going to do what is needed today mm -hmm. so that you can become whom god has called you to be and fulfill your purpose and fulfill your destiny, destiny. so my first point is we have to be mindful of the future and the next thing i want to talk about this is my second point how do we enlarge Oh, hallelujah. How do we, we enlarge, enlarge our, territory. our territory? Now, mm, I, I, mm. And again, this is a simple message. So I just have a, a couple of things I want to talk about. And how do we enlarge it? Let's, let's just think about this mm. for a moment. And uh, I'll ask Sherry to read this verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the lord the spirit okay so it's by the spirit of god we're being changed so if we're going to enlarge our territory every time we're changed we have a greater uh, territory more territory to rule over more authority so as we're being changed and that's god's plan to change all of us uh, into the image of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I like this. When we're changed, we're going to have authority over more territory. Amen. And so this is the, this is the second point. Uh, and it's the first point here that uh, to enlarge, how do we enlarge? And, and now we're at A uh, on this, how do we do it? Well, we have to be changed. 
And that's by the spirit of God that we're transformed. And so we're going to higher and higher level. And we do that every day of our life. There's no, uh, there's no limit of how quickly we mm. can change or how, how far we can change. We're being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. While we're looking at, in the word of God, we're looking at him and we're seeing whom we are becoming. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. So this is the point under how are we enlarged? We have to be changed into the image of Jesus Christ. Then we have more power and more authority. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I, I want to go into it uh, a little bit more now about uh, there's something that the Lord told me a long time ago, and that is I ascribe no power mm -hmm. to the devil. Mm -hmm. I ascribe no power. Now, a lot of people, they come along and say, oh, the devil's so powerful. He's, he's been on my back all week and he's so powerful. But the Holy Spirit told me to ascribe and that, mm -hmm. that is to, to say I'm not giving any, mm -hmm. not uh, not saying he has any power. So our role is to negate the power. Our role is to negate the power. And, and if we talk about how powerful the devil is, th then we just magnify him. We magnify him. And who we need to magnify is, is Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus. Amen. We, we magnify the Lord Jesus. And so... Uh, it's authority, and we, we need to keep our eyes on the one with all authority, that's Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, finisher of our of faith. Our faith. And so when we keep our eyes on him, he's the one with all authority. He delegates authority to us, and he gives us authority to tread on all of the power of the enemy so we can negate the power of the enemy. So if let's say the power of the enemy is raging in your life or in your family. We need to be operating in faith and negate any of his power. Mm. And we do that with the authority that has been delegated to us by the Holy Spirit, uh, by Jesus, by the Father, through the Holy Spirit. And so as mm. we grow, as we grow in our relationship uh, with the Lord, then we're going to have more and more authority because Jesus said in Matthew 25, 23, to whom little, uh, to whom is faithful in little things, I'll make them ruler over more. So if you've been faithful in little, I'll give you more. And so mm, hallelujah. You, you go, you're faithful today, you'll have more tomorrow. Faithful uh, the next day, you'll have more the next, the next. And hallelujah, it's hallelujah, hallelujah. It's increasing your territory, increasing your influence, mm, mm, increasing mm. your air, uh, sphere of authority. That's good, you, that's good. You're faithful in a little, you'll be ruler over much. You'll have authority, Woo, hallelujah. authority to negate the power of the devil. I say... I ascribe no power to the devil Amen. because Amen. Jesus has given me authority to tread on. And that means stomp it down, stomp down any power that Amen. the enemy uh, might have trying to come at me or you. Stomp it down, stomp Hallelujah. on it. Put it in the in the uh, in the dust. Hallelujah. Jesus we have has authority. all authority here in this place. He has all authority here for this habitation that you and I is fashioned for the Lord's presence. All authority here. Jesus has all authority in each one of you. He has all authority in Brother Fred. He has all authority in me. Hallelujah. And we crush the enemy's head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so first I said how we're going to increase uh, 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 and, and to enlarge our territory. Well, I talked about be future oriented, and then I'm going into more specifically here and point to how to enlarge your territory. And, and the, the first one then is to tread on the uh, power of the enemy mm, to, the grow, of the enemy. to yeah. grow in authority in and our relationship change. with the Lord to be changed into his image. 
the second is that we can pray uh, to enlarge our territory. Mm, you know, mm. Jabez. Jabez is an interesting story. Uh, his name meant pain and sorrow. That's what his mother thought about mm, it. Mm. Now that's a prophetic. Uh, when when you're named, and I I don't know in in uh, uh, what your the names that your parents named you, and I don't know exactly what they mean, but uh, they were often prophetic, and, and they meant something. Uh, that, and, and you might think, well, just my mother or my dad came up and just dreamed it up. Well, no. Y you know, it says in the Bible that uh, God knew us and foreknew us, and he named us while Amen. we were in the womb. And so he, he had some influence on your, on your naming. And it might well be it's a prophetic name. My my uh, uh, grandson uh, is named uh, Jaden uh, Daniel, and Jaden means uh, God judges, and Daniel means God judges. That that means he had a, yeah. he had a double. That's a double confirmation that uh, God is going to judge his situation, and he's going to work through him as judge. And Amen. so I'm saying Amen. that. Uh, even though his parents uh, may have been oblivious to it at the time, but God had a purpose for my little grandson. Uh, and uh, may it's probably the true for each one of us that uh, God was involved in your naming. Now with this one, Jabez, his name meant pain and sorrow. I guess he had brought a lot of pain and sorrow to his mother. But uh, he didn't want it to be that way. So you can change your situation. Oh, hallelujah. So he, hallelujah. Even though his mother may have thought she was giving him a prophetic name that he was going to always be called pain and sorrow, sorrow because that was his life and his lifestyle. But no, he didn't He didn't like that. He, he chose his own future and he prayed to enlarge his territory. So let's read this here. Yeah. And First Chronicles, Chronicles 4.10. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. I don't know how many of you, I, I, I read this over or confess this over myself every day. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from all evil and harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Okay. Let's Hallelujah. Look He's reversing his destiny. His, Woo! His Hallelujah. Mother spoke a prophetic word of him being pain and the sorrow, but mm, he's mm, changing mm, everything mm, here. Mm. So maybe uh, the names that your parents gave, uh, gave you weren't the ones uh, that God intends for you to have. You can change things. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Another thing here is, that God answered this prayer. He said, I don't and want God to cause... granted his request. God said, I, I mean, uh, Jabez says, I don't want to cause pain. I want to, my uh, territory to be enlarged. Mm, I want to be to blessed. Well, okay, so this is a prayer in the in the Bible, and we can use this as a pattern to pray. You can pray. I prayed it uh, day after day after day for amen, months. Amen, amen. No, I haven't prayed it lately over myself. I should. It's still a good prayer. It's something that is in line with God's will because he granted the prayer. He gave the Jabez exactly what he asked. Now, here's another point. God is not a, has no favoritism, shows no favoritism, no partiality. Amen. What he's done for one, he'll do for you. What he did for Jabez here, you pray this prayer over your life and you'll see your territory enlarge. So I've got two points about Amen. how do we enlarge it? How do we enlarge it? Well, we've got to change. We've got to be changed into the image of Jesus Christ. Day, it's a day-by-day -day process. And we can pray. Oh, hallelujah. You want to speed it up? You want to speed up uh, uh, your territory and, and have more territory? And again, let's talk about all of those uh, territories. We might be talking about authority over finances, authority over uh, just over your neighborhood, you want peace in your neighborhood. Maybe you live in an apartment uh, complex and there's a lot of uh, chaos going on there. Uh, you ask for uh, ask for more ter authority to rule over your territory. Amen. Have authority Amen. to bring peace. Uh, 
to your neighborhood. Uh, whatever it is, bring uh, peace to your children, bring uh, salvation to your children, whatever it is you need. We all need things. And, and don't think, oh, I've arrived. Paul said, Paul said, oh, I'm pressing on. Amen. I haven't gotten Amen. there yet. Amen. I don't, I think we're all at that point. We haven't gotten where we want to be yet, but we can press on to the goal. That's our future. Be mindful of where we're going. Yeah. Uh, well, I just want to give a quick example okay. here. Uh, the, the amount of travel that Brother Fred and I do, we stay in different hotels and different places. And the moment we get into a hotel room or the moment we step off the plane into a new place, we take authority over all evil in that place. We take authority over any uh, evil that has been in that room that we're going to sleep in uh, over the whole uh, hotel. Yeah, uh, we, we pray for peace over the whole. Uh, we pray for peace over the whole hotel. All over the whole hotel, and also over the the place that we're in. And so, this is something that you might want to consider uh, as God is increasing your authority. Uh, then you take authority wherever you are. Uh, take authority over evil, over arguments, over uh, any type of of hurt uh, that might be there. And um, it reminds me of a time we were in a Waffle House and a uh, cook and a waitress were arguing back and forth. And uh, what did you do, Sherry? I stood up because I I, I was. <laughs> We had just come back from Honduras and we were wanting to get home and we were hungry. We were, uh, our bodies were tired and, and they were arguing and I stood up where I was in my booth and, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I stop this arguing. It will cease right now and we will have a peaceful supper. In Jesus' name. It, they did not say another word. It got very, 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 very quiet, quiet in, there. in there. You can take authority. You wherever, can take authority wherever, wherever you are. Okay. Now, let's think back about the garden. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, they, they let the enemy in. And so we can't let the enemy That's into right. our territory. So I have three points, as I said. We've got to be mindful of the future. And then we've got to enlarge our territory. And when we enlarge our territory, we have to secure it. This is the third point. Mm, we have to, to secure. secure. Oh, hallelujah. Provide don't, security. You, you don't want the enemy to come in. Oh, and wow. Wow. Havoc in your territory. And, mm, and, uh, mm, mm, mm. So the first one I, I talk about is uh, from Psalm 91. Now, this is a psalm that... Uh, the Lord uh, gave me uh, decades ago and, and that saved my life because I was quoting it in uh, in a very difficult time. And so I am very much relate to uh, Psalm 91. And uh, <coughs> this is a way that we can secure uh, our territory. The way to secure it is to look at 91. Psalm 91 begins, uh, uh, creates a pattern uh, to secure it. And so, <laughs> It begins with in the presence of God. And so when we're in the presence of God, there is security. Uh, and so that's we, we, when we're in his presence, we can grow and expand our territory uh, and we put security around it. So read just these first okay. couple of verses. Psalm, but the whole chapter applies. Psalm 91 verses one and two. And then Wendy has asked for a, an example of how to secure okay. uh, our environment. Uh, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So number one, it's in his presence. Number two, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we trust in the Lord and because we trust in the Lord, faith begins to rise up in us. And it's that faith, that wall of faith, that shield of faith that protects all of the parts 
of the uh, in the natural realm, the shield of faith protects all of the vital organs. It protects the heart, the liver, the the kidneys. It protects all the intestines, all of those parts that are vital for your life. The shield of faith provides that, and so as we as we trust the Lord and we come into his presence and we say to him shield of faith protect my territory okay. bring security to my territory and my family to my home every night when we go to bed we pray part of our prayer is that we set the warring not just an angel but the warring angels around our in our bedroom and then we put them around our house and then we command them remember they're ministering spirits and so in the name of jesus we put the warring angels in our bedroom in our home around our vehicle around our property and that no evil can come nigh our dwelling because we trust the lord hallelujah so is is that a good enough example right there? No, well, I'm going to give. Her, Hallelujah! I'm going to give her some more things. Okay. And uh, in in Psalm 91, uh, and I think it's around verse five. There's a uh, Hebrew word there, kateb, mm, and it talks mm, about mm, uh, mm. a demonic force. Yeah. And uh, we use the word kateb uh, to describe. Uh, the demonic uh, COVID uh, uh, spirit, the demonic spirit mm -hmm. for COVID. Yeah. We call him Kateb. Yes. And, and so uh, when our friends uh, get, um, get COVID, th these are just examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'd have to go back and look at the Hebrew words in, in it uh, and see this. But what we do, we call them, and sometimes uh, this has happened several times. That yeah, we've just called, recently. We've called people, and, uh, and even on the phone, because we couldn't go in and see them when they were when they had COVID. So we called them on the phone, and we called out the spirit Kateb, uh, which was that uh, demonic influence behind the COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID uh, virus and all of those derivatives from it. It's all goes back to demonic forces and we called out that demonic force and that kept people from dying we called mm -hmm. it out of them so uh the spirit had to leave it did it didn't it wasn't just a simple healing it wasn't just a mending of their bodies right but we cast out the uh, the devil behind the covid uh 19 we and took all, authority over it took authority over it cast it out uh and send it to dry places. And so this is an example of how you can use Psalm 91 in particular. You look at the different things. And uh, for example, if you have uh, uh, terrors by night, well, there's a scripture in there that uh, that relates mm -hmm. to that. You can begin to confess it. I, uh, begin to read all of 91. I, I read all of it. And uh, the particular example that uh, helped me in really a life and death matter was in uh, the, uh, like 1987 and I was on a runway there was a, a storm a fierce storm in Washington DC and I was uh, number one the airplane that I was in was number one on the runway to take off but we had to sit there I don't know for at least an hour and a half they were de-icing waiting for a break in the storm so we could go and during that time, it was very frightful because of the winds and, and uh, the freezing and ice and all of that. And and uh, what I was uh, just muttering to myself during that time, a thousand may fall uh, by my side, 10,000 by my right hand, but will not, not come, come near me. me. And so I kept confessing that over that time period when they were trying to de-ice the plane. And finally, there was a break, they said. And so they let us off. And, and so we took off. And, and we took off, uh, and I call it the day when the planes it's couldn't fly, fly, because I had I had believed in Psalm 91, and I was quoting that particular verse: "A thousand may fall by my side, ten thousand right by my right hand, but shall not come near me." And number two plane 
uh, could not fly. It flew into, into the Potomac, the, into the bridge and into the Potomac. And uh, there were 80 some odd people killed. Well, the same thing could have happened to my plane. We were number one. We got off. Number two went into a bridge and into the Potomac a River and they drowned. And it could, it was a difference of faith. Uh, mm, that's right. The I angels mean, held I up mean. my plane and caused it to fly yes. on the day when planes couldn't fly. Wow. Hallelujah. So Psalm 91, Psalm 91 puts a shield of protection around you and around your family. You need to know how to use it. Take time to study it. Meditate on it. Speak mm -hmm. it out. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. It, see, it all starts there in verse 1. Well, it's in the presence of the Lord. If you, how are you going to be changed from glory to glory? In the presence of the Lord. Because you're looking uh, in the perfect law of liberty into the Word of God and the Holy, and you're being changed, transformed by the Holy Spirit. So it's all about being in the presence mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Now I have an, another uh, verse, and, and this is, comes from Isaiah 60. We are to call something. We are to call security into effect. Uh, we call uh -huh. walls of salvation oh, and, and gates, gates of, of praise. praise. Okay, so read this verse. Isaiah here. 60, verse 18. We are to call, we call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Okay, now the thing about this, when you get new territory, when you grow and mature, you have more authority and, and taking over more territory, maybe it's just territory inside of you, maybe it's territory in your neighborhood or workplace, or maybe you're being promoted to a job or, or a business, your business is growing, whatever it is, or maybe your children are, are growing. You know, you, you think you have a, a, a control over your children when they're two or three years of old. Well, what happens when they get to be 20, yeah, 21, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get in a car and they're gone? And, and so you, you, you need more authority to deal with a, a, a children that are grown than those that are just three or four years old. So as that authority grows, then you need to be confessing some things. Here are some things to confess. I've got new territory. I've, I've expanded. The Lord has given me new territory, more, more authority, more power. I need to declare uh, that uh, there is a wall around my new yes, territory. Yes, a wall of salvation. A wall of salvation and gates of praise. Now, what does that mean? Well, wall, the wall of salvation, that's established by God. And so you have to do it. It's by faith. But praise, that's established by believers. And so you if you're going to close your gate, it, it doesn't do any good to have a wall if you've got an open gate. You've got to be able to control your gate. And, and the way you do that is with praise. You praise the Lord, and that sets uh, an ambushment. It ambushes the enemy, but it sets a gate that cannot come in your territory. Just like uh, Sherry was telling you a moment ago, we set warring angels. We speak these things out. We pray things. We decree things uh, for uh, protection over our territory. When we go into a new hotel at night, we go all over the world, uh, and we're we're taking authority. When we walk into that uh, hotel, we're, we're taking authority over there. We do it with prayer, with decrees, uh, with uh, just believing God. And, and when you when you praise God, you you build that gate there in, in your wall. You ask God for the wall, you, you begin to decree things about your wall, and God mm -hmm. gives you new territory. You, you, you establish a wall there, and that's in cooperation and partnership with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not all about by yourself, but you create that wall around the territory that God is giving you, and then you praise God, and that puts a gate there, and the enemy cannot come in. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. this Amen. is a simple message. Uh, I hope that it encourages you, that gives you insight, that we all need to change. We need to be changed from glory to glory, transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we're being changed, we're going to take on new authority, have new more power, more authority. We take on more territory. Uh, more territory. We need to secure it. Okay, Hallelujah. It. Hallelujah. You. Well, this is a wonderful message. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And I and I believe every word of it. And I know that that we practice this and we uh we do it. Uh and you know, it says to be a doer of the word. And you know, part of those gates 
uh, our our mouth, our ears, our eyes, uh, our mind is even as a gate uh, through thoughts uh, going in and out of it. And so praise uh, helps us secure what we're saying so that we're saying what God wants us to say. And it, it, it also protects our eyes that we're seeing what God is doing and not what the devil is doing. You know, a lot of people, the only thing they see is what the devil is doing. And that, that makes them weak. That makes them a weak warrior. And we don't want to be WWs. You know, we want to be MWs, which is a mighty warrior. Uh, hallelujah. And so, and then it also clears out our ears so that we hear from the spirit of the Lord. If we are praising the Lord, if we're praising him and we need to make a place where we can praise him. We need to make a place. Um, maybe it's a physical place. Uh, I know brother Fred has his rock that he likes to go to at Memorial park and, and sit on his rock and, and, uh, he, he praises the Lord there. He listens to the Lord there. And so I encourage you tonight to find a place where you can be with the Lord and you can hear from him. And therefore that's the changes will begin and, and then the security will come and um, the walls of salvation uh, will, will come. Uh, and your your place will be secure. You know, we want our families to be secure. We want uh, our jobs to be secure. And the way that we do that is in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I am so thankful that Brother Plane, the plane that Brother Fred was flying on flew that day. And I know that it was the very presence of the Lord and his confession that he was sitting there confessing Psalm 91. A thousand will fall at my, what is it? A thousand may fall at my side, a thousand, a thousand by my right, right hand, hand, but it will, it will not, not come, come nigh me. me. Hallelujah. 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 And so we, we use that authority that God has given us wisely. And if we don't use it, the enemy will crush us. The enemy will come in and bring things upon into our mind and bring things into our bodies. And, and so it's that authority, uh, that territory of, of authority that we've been talking about tonight. I'm